The soul is that place in you that is in constant wonder. Constant wonder. While we uh, walk by, you know, the only thing that really grabs our attention in the moment, I've noticed, is our cell phones, our text messaging machines. On the way out here, uh, there was a guy who ran late to the plane. Everybody was on uh, the plane. They were getting ready to close the door. This guy comes running in. He's got two bags. There, he's, no, he's not going to find any overhead compartment, but he's going to check every door, of course. And he's coming down the plane, and he's, and he's going, I can't believe I made it. And the steward is saying, you've got, you got to find a seat. You got all, of a sudden, all of a sudden, his phone rings. And he stops everything. The whole plane is waiting for him to sit down to get to this phone. Right? And who calls you on the phone? People who are bored. <laughs> People who are driving in their car. Nothing to do. Hey, what are you doing? And you could tell this is one of the guys who called him. He's going, yeah. Oh, well, I'm trying to get on a plane right now. And this woman comes up and says, can I help you? And he says, yeah. And she grabs his phone and shuts it. She says, go find your seat. This guy was like stunned. And everybody, just like here, applauded. <laughs> Not just for him, but for all those people who have nothing to do, who call us at the wrong time. And I wish we were as attentive as we are to our phones. I wish we were as attentive to wonder, to the 10,000 miracles that we pass each day of our lives. The beauty of the sky, the wonder of children, these babies who are here among us with these faces, they're so present, so fresh from God. Uh, the warmth of friendship, uh, the intimacy of, of family, good food to eat, coffee, all these things, right? And we hurry past them. But the soul's in constant wonder. My son, Joseph, um, when he was four years old, my older son was six, I, would get, I was in charge of getting him ready to school and taking him to school in the morning. So they would, uh, uh, I would get up and we'd kind of do this hustle where I'm getting their shoes on and they're taking them off and I'm putting them back on and then they're throwing them around the room and, and I'm trying to keep them on them, duct taping them back on to the ankles and, and getting their backpacks ready, making the lunches. Come on, guys, we had to get ready to school. And the deal was that I would walk them to school and then after I dropped them off at this little preschool, I would walk to work. So I had to get them there so I could get to work on time. And so I'm hurrying up and I'm getting them going. And when we would get out the door, my older son, Noah, he's a little bit more like me. He's a little, a little wired. And so he would start running and I'd start running. I'd say, come on, Joseph, let's go. And my younger son, Joseph, four years old, would just walk like this. And I'd say, Joseph, come on, man, we got to hurry. I got to get to work. We got to get you to school. Come on, buddy. And, he'd, and he would walk, and as he was walking, he would always start stopping and go, Dad, look at this bark. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole block full of bark chips, Joseph. I'm not going to stop and look at that right now. But, Dad, this is a cool one. No, put it down. A <laughs> few more steps, you know. Hey, Dad, somebody threw a yogurt cup in here. This is cool. I could use this for a pirate mug. Joseph, throw that back in there. We're not using old yogurt cups for a mug. And he would try to hide it in his jacket or shirt. And <laughs> Keeping the pirate mug. I'm not throwing that back in the bushes. <laughs> you know, and so he's, he's collecting these things. To this day, he goes back. We have an alley behind our house. And, and uh, there's college kids back there. And they flip beer caps into the alley. And Joseph, to this day, goes out and collects all these things. Like they're Spanish doubloons. And he hides them under his bed till it smells like 10 alcoholics live in his bedroom. <laughs> and I have to go and take these things out and disappear them. But this is, uh, this is Joseph. He says, I don't know what happened to all the beer caps. There's fairies who live under my bed and take them. I don't know. <laughs> but this was the struggle we had. He, he would walk and he would stop at all these things he'd want to look at. And I was always, eventually I'd pick him up and hold him over my shoulder and run and drop him off and get there. Well, uh, one night, we're having dinner. Joseph's sitting at the table, the rest of us, and we're eating dinner, and Joseph says, um, I started a club today. And we say, oh, really? We started a club. What's your club? He said, oh, it's called a slow club. <laughs> and he said, uh, I'm the president. <laughs> I said, oh, is other kids in your club? Or no, it's just me. You know, this is the moment where my wife looks at me to say, this is for you. <laughs> and 
And I said, well, what, uh, what do you do in Slow Club? And uh, he says, we have two rules. No running and no hurrying. So I said, okay. So we kind of talk about this a little bit. We have dinner, we do bedtime. Next morning, I get up, I'm doing the hustle, getting their shoes on, getting their clothes on, get the backpacks packed, getting everything ready. We go outside the door, say, no, we got to get there. We got we to hurry up and get to a school, run a little bit late. Noah takes off running, I'm getting ready to run. I say, Joseph, come on, we got to go. And Joseph goes, he's walking like this. I say, Joseph, we got to hurry. He goes, Dad, I'm in slow club. I can't run and I can't hurry. And so for the rest of that morning, I'm walking like this, Ugh, you know, just incredibly constipated, just, I can't believe this. To walk like this, because he's president. <laughs> and so for the rest of that year, he would ask, anytime people came over to our house or kids or whatever, he would ask him, do you want to join my club? And he had, he'd, he'd had us write out his little charter, and nobody could agree to be in the club. Because nobody could honestly promise to follow these two rules. So uh, the next summer, I'm leading a camp up in Washington, and uh, Joseph's with me, and he wakes up in the morning. He says, Dad, would you like a one-day pass to Slow Club? I had to think about it. And I finally said, okay, I'll do this. And so he color, takes his colors out, and he makes me a little one-day pass, and and I keep this thing, and so we are kind of hanging out for the day, and it's, it's not too bad. And lunchtime, we're out, we're watching some kids playing Ultimate Frisbee, and they're out in this field, and they're playing, we're watching them. And the lunch bell rings, and it's one of these lunches where, like, they only got so much hot food. You know, it's like one chicken leg per every 2.3 people. <laughs> and then it's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you know, on the... And so as soon as I hear that lunch thing, right, I'd say to Joseph, i say, we got to run. we got to hurry because there's going to be a big line. All these kids are going to be there. Come on, that's the lunch bell. Let's get going. And Joseph says, Dad, you're in slow club now. We don't run. And so we walk like this <laughs> while all these teenagers are running, all the adult counselors are running, the program people, 85-year-olds uh, and walkers are coming by us. <laughs> We're just moving like this. And he can see I'm a little bit downhearted. And he says, Dad, look around and you're going to notice stuff that other people didn't see, that they ran by. So we're looking around and sure enough, we see two jackrabbits. And I say, hey, there's two rabbits. He goes, yeah. He says, now, Dad, the other people didn't see those. Yeah, it's kind of cool. So we walk a little further and we see these lupin flowers and, and we see uh, different butterflies. We see this group of lizards on a rock sunning themselves and I'm getting kind of excited. And we, get, and we have lunch and my wife's there and my other... Son's there, and Joseph's like, Dad, tell Mom what you saw. And I'm telling her about all these things, and he's just sitting there. And I realized that Joseph is trying to help me recover something I knew but have lost. You see, we're trained. We are trained to no longer see the presence of God in the world. We're trained to always focus on the end goal instead of the journey in getting there. We're trained to no longer allow ourselves to fall back and wonder at the night sky. To sit there uh, in sort of uh, gazing on the beauty of this world. We're trained to sort of lose it and we start to go numb. Well, the soul is that place in us that's in constant wonder. Even while we scurry on, living in our minds that are analyzing and criticizing and, and organizing and anxious, our soul still sits back in awe and wonder. You know, uh, I just was with a group of kids up at a lake, Lake Tahoe, and uh, I told them, I said, you know, I was just, when I was coming in tonight, I said this, the, there was a sunset that was just gorgeous, and, and there's the Sierra Mountains over the lake, and I said it was purple and it was beautiful. And these kids kind of sat there, and I had this feeling. I said, have you guys ever seen a sunset before? I mean, like, really sat and watched it? And there was about 50 or 60 teenagers, and they all said, no. And I said, that's the program tonight. I'm taking you out to the edge of the lake. I'm going to want you to sit by yourself and say, God, I just want to be with you. And then I want you to watch the sun go down. Now, what do you think their first response was? How long is this going to take? <laughs> How long does the sunset last? I said, we're just going to try this. Don't worry. It's not going to be too long. Give me your cell phones and iPods and all the other gadgets. And I staggered them out. And I've done this two or three times where I've had kids do this. And we watch the sun go down, and it's lavender and pinks. And 
the shoulders of these mountains kind of silhouette against the sky and, and, and these colors start to reflect off the stillness of the lake and it's just spectacular as the North Star and these other stars start to come out into the sky in that a blue that gets darker and darker and finally turns black and we're sitting there and every time I do this, this happens. Kids start to cry. They just start to cry. It's so beautiful, they say. It's just so beautiful. Our kids need to recapture that sense of wonder. We need to recapture. That's where our souls thrive and grow and stretch. That's where God lives in us, in that place of wonder. 